So that is a little bit of the opening credits song of Dual Parallel Trouble Adventure, a remix that is. And that is the anime I'm going to be talking to you about right here. What if somebody looked at Neon Genesis Evangelion, one of the most famous pillars of anime, and said, why don't we make fun of this? That is what Dual Parallel Trouble Adventure is. It is a loving parody of Neon Genesis Evangelion made by the creators of Tenchi Moyo, the anime franchise that essentially invented the harem genre. It invented the bathhouse episode as a trope. Um, it is a remarkable show because not only does it parody Evangelion, it tells its own story. It is its own anime story and universe in and of itself. And there's another little twist in here for Tenchi fans, but I'll get to that later. So basically, Dual Parallel Trouble Adventure um, focuses on a, a young man named Kazuki Yotsuka. And Kazuki is a pretty normal teenage boy, except that he has these visions. He sees giant robots battling in the sky and battling among the skyscrapers of the city he calls home. Um, the damage isn't real. They're not actually real. Uh, buildings fall on him and it, they're just images. Nothing actually happens. Until one day, when um, stuff happens, I won't reveal too much of the plot here, again, no spoilers except for the premise, where he finds himself in this alternate world of giant robots and uh, angsty teenagers who pilot them, um, who are fighting off uh, these weird sort of um, quasi-biological mecha. It's all very Evangelion. There's even a, um, a smart aleck, sort of really tough, long-haired girl who keeps calling the Kazuki uh, an idiot. There is a quiet girl with short bobbed hair who is also kind of a robot. Um, <clears throat> the tropes are pretty much all there. And uh, while Kazuki is kind of caught up in the middle of all this and doesn't really want to fight, but he fights anyway. And that would be fun enough for a 13 episode anime series that's parodying of Evangelion. But here's the thing. Um, this show in the, that first episode establishes, actually in the second episode particularly, Kazuki, he's no longer at home. His parents have no idea who he is. Um, he doesn't exist in this world. He is alone. And the show really, you know, focuses on that. Because Kazuki is not Shinji. He is fulfilling Shinji's role. But he's not dealing with the same issues Shinji has, the father issues, even the mother issues. So very quickly, Duel establishes its own themes that it explores. Uh, themes around personal responsibility and doing the right thing and protecting others. But doing this in a show that is explicitly parroting Evangelion, this is the fun thing about this show. It's, it's taking all of those tropes and just having fun with them. Uh, the, main, the, the, the pilot character, D, who is the Ray clone of the series, She's just, you know, she's completely emotionless, um, and they just really play on the fact that ha what a ridiculous kind of a character concept that is, but then they make that an interesting character uh, as the, the show goes on. What's also fun is that, is how much it works in the sort of harem anime aspect of, again, it's the staff of, or a lot of the same staff as Tenchi. So he ends up living in the same house with a bunch of these uh, characters. And having all the back and forth between them and him um, is a lot of fun. Um, you know, Evangelion doesn't really delve into that in any serious any serious depth. Uh, you know, what it's like to actually do all this, while Duel actually does to a good extent. What's fun about Duel also is well, I'll just say how deep the parody goes. There's some stuff at the end of this this series which is just like. Wow, you really you, you know you really knew what you're you're parodying there. It's 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 impressive, um, but and again without getting into spoilers, the great thing is this has its own ending. It is not just parodying the last few episodes of Evangelion. 
um, it its story builds to its own conclusion, which is satisfying in its own way, um, quite completely. Like at the end, you're like, yes, that that is the ending I wanted out of this show. In a sense, the ending of Duel is the ending that they wanted to do for Evangelion but couldn't. Um, you know, it is that big. Um, satisfying ending that we didn't really get, in a sense, in original Evangelion, much as I love Evangelion's TV ending. So that's that's really cool. Um, now, the animation in Duel is definitely um, uh, typical of its time, um, which is, the I believe, the, the mid-90s. So, decent animation budget. Um, the, the mecha battles, in particular, are very clearly and cleanly animated. A lot of fun. And um, the character animation is also quite effective. It doesn't really go too bonkers with the art style. There's certainly a lot more than Evangelion does. Um, again, it's a, it's a little more pop uh, animation style, a little more loose with its expressions, if you will. Characters doing your big round eyes and things like that. Very, very, very occasionally, very briefly. So it's one of the nice things. Is it has a little bit more fun with its premise than some of these other shows, and much more so than a straight parody would be, I think. Um, Duel, in general, the direction and editing of the show are very clean. It's always very clear what's going on. Some of the battle scenes can get a little chaotic, um, but they very quickly pull that back so you understand who's doing what at, um, at any given time. It's easy for people to try to replicate the chaos of battle in an animated work or in any kind of, of fictional work by just making it confusing. But a fictional work is meant to be fiction. It, you know, it's meant to to express things. So if you know if that chaos doesn't have some meaning, you know, if if we can't learn anything from that chaos other than it being chaos, it's not really very useful. So they do a good job of of making a few things you know a little too quick to follow, um, or a little unclear you know what you're seeing in a, in a given shot, but it all comes together quite nicely. Um, you know, you definitely understand what's going on throughout the entire show. Um, now, these shows generally live and die on their characters. Um, I personally really appreciated how each character is a shifted version of a character from Evangelion. It's not Shinji, it's not Rei, it's not um, Asuka, it's not even the same character with the serial numbers filed off. Each of these characters has their own backstory and problems and issues that don't always parallel those in Evangelion. Uh, they have their own problems, and the show explo explores those problems. That's one of the nice things. It actually moves into that, you know, um, um, it moves into, in, into explaining those aspects of the characters, which I really, really appreciate. Um, so you do get a variety of well-established characters. Um, if I were someone who is into conspiracy theories, I would say that the character of Mari Illustrious was possibly kind of sort of inspired by a character in Duel. It's a stretch. And I, I honestly doubt that Anno ever saw Duel, but it's kind of interesting. Anyway. Now, I'm going to talk for a minute about a kind of a weird topic, which is believability. Um, again, this is a show that is parroting Evangelion. How believable can it be? This is one of the things that really impresses me about Duel, is that it establishes its own setting and its own world. And there are some ridiculous things in that world. Um, but it does establish those things. And it does work off of those premises. Evangelion is a great example of a show that sometimes feels like it's making it up as it goes along. Um, everything, you know, comes together and fits, um, well, depending on your, your perspective. In other words, you know, Evangelion was not made up as it went along completely. I'm, I'm not suggesting that. Um, you know, there was a plan. But Duel feels more intentionally structured than Evangelion can feel sometimes. Uh, and again, that's not a, that's not, nothing against Evangelion. Evangelion has this, this, that's one of the interesting things about its structure. But Duel fits. It, it, Duel feels, for lack of a better term, like a slightly more grown-up Evangelion. And, and by that I mean, um, 
when you're young, sometimes you have all of the energy and passion for a project and you push through and you do something brilliant, but one that lacks the refinement of someone who's older and who comes in and does something that is less exciting, that is less remarkable, that is um, less um, stunning than the young person's work, but is more understandable. That's what Duel feels like. It feels like it's playing in the same playground, but it's it's telling um, a, a more straightforward story in the best possible sense of the word. So I'm, I'm very impressed with that. Um, um, it also helps that it is an anime and they understand they're making anime. Like, they don't take themselves too seriously uh, with all that. One of the other nice things about Duel, uh, if you happen to like English voices, is this has an excellent English dub. Especially given the age of it, I just, I'm very impressed with the voice acting in Duel all the way across. I think they did a really, really good job. All the characters fit, all the voices fit the characters, rather. Um, and they do so in a way that's, again, this is, this is difficult. Because they have to feel a bit like those characters in Evangelion while also having their own identity. While also fitting into this reality. And I think that the voice actors do a really good job of doing that. Uh, particularly the voice actors who does D, again, the, the Ray clone, who doesn't have much to say. Let's <laughs> just be honest. And she gets it across. It's, it's really impressive. Now, there's another neat thing about Duel. If you happen to be a fan of the Tenchi Moyo franchise or ever want to get in, into it, Duel actually exists and fits into the Tenchi Moyo franchise. It is canon within the Tenchi franchise. If you ever watch War on Geminar, as well as the end of Tenchi Moyo GXP, you will see how Duel fits into all that and provides some context. That's a little Easter egg in the show for those who are into that kind of stuff. Um, so in general, Duel is, again, 13 episode anime TV series. It certainly will not provoke or evoke the kind of fevered discussion and analysis that Evangelion will. It's a parody. It's having fun with the concepts. But it does also, it will also tell its own story. You're, you're not just going to see joke after joke after joke at Evangelion's expense. This is saying, hey, somebody did this remarkable thing over here. Let's tell our own story within those confines um, and poke some good-natured fun at the tropes. While also having our own show. That's pretty impressive for an anime series. So if you're interested in that, check it out. It's around... Uh, I'm sure you can pick, uh, you know, pick it up at some point. It was dubbed quite a long time ago. The DVDs are going to be a little hard to pick up, I'm sure. But um, it'll be out there. And also, also, I should point out, the DVDs themselves, like the DVD menus, are parodying the release of Evangelion in America and how the DVDs were released over here, which is, again, pretty impressive. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that and hope you enjoy Duel. It is a personal little favorite of mine. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.